because you can spend that time around the Lord's table. If you would go to the Song of Solomon, chapter 3, we were in Song of Solomon last week. If you left your finger in that spot, be real easy, just to go over one more chapter. But Song of Solomon, chapter 3, and we're going to be down at verse 4. The writer, of course, is Solomon expressing his great love to his new bride. However, the context or the teaching of it really is to remind you and I of the great love of Jesus Christ toward his church. It's easy to say that, but it is more important that you and I remember it's not just to the church at large, not to the church body as a whole, but to you as an individual. We must remember that Jesus Christ is concerned with the individual, that he is in love with you, the person. And through the Song of Solomon, should you have the opportunity to read the book through, it is, as we said last week, a very intimate story. It is the love story between a man and a woman. It is the love story between Christ and his church as he expresses his heart to you. And so I trust as you read it, you will understand and take away from it that great joy that comes when one expresses love to another. The title is The Beloved Beheld, and it is found for you and I in the Song of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 4. And it was but a little that I passed from them, but I found him who my soul loved. I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived him. <clears throat> Last week we heard Solomon talking to the bride, and today we have the bride responding to the groom. The church is the bride of Christ, of course, that would make him the groom. This ought to be our thought and our feeling. She passed from all the crowd that she might be with this one that she loved. The fellowship of friends is great, but to be near that one you love is probably the greatest of all joys. Our love must lead to action. Whenever there is love, there is some action involved. We often say, look, you can see that they are in love. Why? There is some action there. And so it is true. We see her words, I sought him. And so those who would profess their love for Jesus Christ must seek him. Not only in the sense of a Savior, but a day-by-day -day growth with him as they learn more, <coughs> study more, become more of his, if we can say that. And so she seeks the presence of her groom. And after seeking him, she says, I have found him. I suppose the last thing we might say is not only that she found him, but then she begins to bring him home, to share him with those she would know. And so as we look today, three points I share with you. I found him, I held him, I brought him. You know, the only problem with holding him is the fear sometimes you have to let them go. And so here we see in our story, as this bride speaks of her groom. And so we consider these things this morning. I found him. We might call this love in fellowship. I was inquiring for him. You know, in order to find something, you have to go out looking. Many times, we will ask someone directions if we're looking for a particular place. Often we will have to inquire, if we're looking for someone, we might say, have you seen 
so and so. And so you can imagine the inquiry that was going out and about. We know that she had gone far and wide in this adventure of seeking for him. She wouldn't be contented until she found him. Not just the place maybe where he dwelt, not just the things that perhaps he possessed, but she was looking for him. Often, in fact, I don't think a day goes by when I don't walk into my home and the first thing I'll say to my children is, where's mom? Oh, all the kids are there, but it's not completed. I haven't arrived home until I know where's mom. My wife often, she will hear me coming through the door and will know I'm going to be asking the question before long, where's mom? Oh, she's either over here in her office or she's over here. And then I will go about and seek her. I am not satisfied until I find the person herself. It's not good enough just to go, oh, she's home. I want to see her. And so this bride, in seeking for her groom, is not satisfied until she has the groom himself. Just knowing he's around. See, that's the thing we have to remember. I know that Jesus Christ is always around. After all, he's God. There isn't a place where I can go and he is not there. But I don't want to just know about his presence. I want to be in his presence. It is not enough for me just to know that Jesus is there. I want to behold him. And so I want to have fellowship with him. I want to commune with him. I want to tell how my day went. I want to hear from him his response to these things. I want to be assured of his presence. And so... I want to know him to be mine. As you can imagine, this woman wanted to know where is her husband. And so as she goes looking to find him, there's no doubt, no fear. He is my beloved, and my beloved is mine. But knowing that and seeing the person, holding the person, getting to know them, my wife and I have known each other now for a goodly number of years. We've been married for 35 years or so. We know each other much better today than we did all those years ago. But still, we still like to spend time. We still like to talk. We still like to communicate. Why? We still enjoy it. Sometimes we sit in our chairs across from one another. We'll just reach over for the other one and... You will sense that she's reached her hand out. I'll reach mine over just to hold her hand for a while. After 35 years, I still like it. Whenever my wife walks into the room, I still smile. After 35 years, just her walking into the room will always put a smile on my face. And so it is here. She was seeking for him. I found him. Big capital H. I found him. I didn't just know where he was, but I went looking and I found him. And the great thing about Jesus Christ is the discovery of him. The discovery of Christ himself. We should not be contented until we have discovered him. Not just his saving grace, not just his death, burial, and resurrection for us, but to have found him. That is the greatest gift in all of heaven and earth. I trust that you know what the blessing of finding means. You know, we can go through life. I have met a lot of people, but I knew when I found the right one. In a church much like this one. In fact, it was on my sister's wedding day. I was came all the way for I was in the Navy at the time. My sister had asked me to be in her wedding. And so I came up, and there I was, all dressed in my tuxedo, 1970 styles with all the fur. 
that great big bow tie on it. And all the folks, the, the place was packed. The church was crowded. Yet when my wife walked through that back door and lined up on that aisle and began, the Lord said to me, this is the girl you're going to marry. I knew it then. And two years later, we were married. And I have always known she was the one. To this very day, I know she was the one. Amen. I found her, I could say, the great joy and delight of my heart and my life. But I also found Jesus Christ. The greatest joy of my life is finding him. But she goes from I found him to step number two. I held him. Remember the story when Jesus Christ, the morning of his resurrection, they had lost him. He had died. He was placed in the grave. And remember when Mary found him, those ladies had traveled there to the grave site. And when Jesus Christ stood before them, the first thing they did was to grab onto his feet. He wasn't going to get away again. And so we see in our story, our second part of it, I held him. This is not only first we had love in fellowship, the idea of spending time with someone, but here we have love in possession. I held him. It was her heart's resolve. I have got him and I will not let him go. When my wife and I were married, as so many would say, we said also, till death us do part. And we intend fully to keep that promise we made to God and to one another. I intend to hold her in my heart and in my arms as long as her and I have breath. That's our heart's resolve. That is my resolve to Jesus Christ. When I said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Savior, it was my intent that I would be faithful to Him as long as I live. In fact, it, you know, because once I die, I'm going to stand before Him in heaven. I will always be faithful in heaven. But my trial, my temptation, my testing comes in this earth. And there are a great many things that might try to pull you away from Jesus Christ. That's why love is so important. You know, some people say, you know, you've been preaching about loving God for quite some time. Listen, it is the cornerstone. When life comes and tries to destroy a marriage, the only thing that will make it stand is love. And when the world comes and tries to take Jesus Christ from you, when the devil assaults, when trials and temptations come, the only thing that will hold you are those bands of love that you feel toward Jesus Christ. And so I held him. It must be a heart's determination. We had no caveat in our wedding vow. Some people will say, until love us depart. Not what we said. Till death. Because it was my determination. It was her determination. That we would be together that long. And it is my determination. It is Christ's determination that he should be forever. Is that not his promise? I give unto you everlasting life. That where I am, there you may be also. It is the determination of Jesus Christ that I should ever be with him, that he should ever be with me. And when my resolve is too weak, it is stronger still. You are, he would say, in my hand. And I am in the Father's hand. And no one can pluck you out. So, sometimes we see this tearful plea, <coughs> begging him not to withdraw. I remember David in his psalm, Lord, take not your Holy Spirit from me. 
my joy in His presence. Lord, don't leave me until I have the promise. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. My need of His gracious protection. Lord, where would I be without you? This world on many occasions has fought and fought hard against me. But I still stand not in my own strength, but in the strength of Jesus Christ. It has been His protecting arms around me. There was a time or two when people have made an assault against my wife and my family. We had a neighbor fellow, and when he would have a little too much to drink, he'd get a little boisterous. And so I made a neighborly visit over to his house on a day in which he had not been drinking. And I let him know, if you drink, do it in the safety and security of your own backyard. Because if you ever have too much to drink and come and accost my wife again, it'll be the last time. I do two things in one. Weddings and funerals. <laughs> After he always drank in the security of his own backyard. <laughs> that day you don't want to get an Indian real mad. My wife's like, what did you say? I just told him to be best for him. He saved his own car. To which all the rest of the years that we lived there, he never did. Bothered with Coster again. Why? What she couldn't do, I could. I could back it up. What I cannot do, Christ can do. Let me tell you, He can back it up. And so, my love toward Him and His love toward me is a hunger. It's a desire. It's a want. By making Him my all in all, I have stayed where the prize is. I consider Jesus Christ the greatest prize of all. I have set him upon the throne of my heart and I have bowed the knee to him. I do my best at leaving him on the throne and try to keep myself off of him. By a simple faith, for I have placed my trust in him. Because I found he enjoys resting for he is trusting <laughs> So I trust him. And by his own power. For he said, I would not let you go. See, he gave me a promise. By his own power, he gave this. I hold Christ not by my strength. For who could really hold God down? No one. Yet he gave me the power to hold him. That power he has given over me is a promise. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And he gave me this power over him, this power of love, by which I might hold him to me. Whosoever to call upon the name of the Lord shall never be ashamed, shall never be forgotten, shall never be let go. And so his promise has been my strength to hold him captive. I don't worry of him running out of love for me because his love is infinite. I ask every day that he would pour within my heart a little more love toward him. That I might always stay in love with him. I read his words. I look at his suffering. Oh, I say to myself, how he loved me. Lord, help me to love you just a little bit more. He is willing to be constrained by you, each and every one of us in this room. He is willing to yield to your will. If you would say, Lord, come into my heart and be my Savior, He will come in 
and sup with you and be with you. That leads us to our third point then. I brought him, she said. Here is our love in communication. The love of Jesus Christ creates in our heart love toward our fellow believers. See, remember I told you love is the central key. How can I love my fellow brothers and sisters if I don't love Christ? I cannot treat you any better than I treat Jesus. If I am willing to mistreat God, do you think you have a chance at being treated properly? Someone had asked me not long ago, how can people treat me that way? I said, take a look at how they might be treating God. You think they'll treat you better than they treat Him? If folks can turn their back on God, they can turn their back on you. If I could desert Jesus Christ, I could probably then desert my wife and family. But I cannot. The promise we made before God stands. I stand before God every day of my life. We love, we are told, we love God because He first loved us. Our love is a response to what He has done for us. Greater love than this hath no man than to lay down his life for a friend. But we were His enemies. While we yet were in our sin, Christ died for us. He died before I ever knew Him. Before I was ever born, He died for me. He was in love with me before I was ever made. My love has been a constant chasing after or trying to catch up. His was always beforehand. Knowing the very beginning of my days and the very end of my days, knowing the kind of person I would be, knowing the number of times I would fail him, knowing my frailty, he chose me and died for me. Though he knew there would not be a perfect day in all of my Christianity, he died for me. He loved me. He loves me. He loves you. And so it is no surprise that she might say, I brought him. Here we have this church. What is our responsibility but to bring Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world? She brought him home. Mom, this is the man that I have married. Before we were ever married, I was introduced to my wife's father and mother. She was introduced to mine. This is my family, for better or for worse. This is her family, for better or for worse. We were introduced to our friends of one another. To my friends, this is my bride. To her friends, this is my husband. And we were not ashamed to introduce the other to our world. And so Jesus Christ has boldly claimed to all the angels of heaven, here is the one for whom I died. And when you walk through those gates, He will gladly hold you by the hand and introduce you to the Father Himself. And yet at times we find ourselves just a little bit ashamed to introduce Him to those we know. Oh, to admit that we are Christians now, I must confess, I have not had that problem. Probably one of preachers today. But the moment I became a Christian, the moment I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I was so overwhelmed by Him, so marveled by His love, that I had to immediately begin to tell people about Him. And I have not been able to stop myself all these years later. It was simply a matter of being in love. We do this by our own spirit. 
communicating with Jesus Christ before we go to public worship, we have prayed in our closet. Those who pray publicly only don't pray at all. Our prayers are effective in this church because your prayers are effective at home. By our words, we speak of Jesus Christ to one another, to a lost and dying world, to all that we meet. I don't know anybody who has met me for more than two minutes that does not know that I'm a Christian. As is necessary from time to time because my wife and I and the churches that we have served many times are unable to support us and so I have maintained secular work. I work today at Foothill Presbyterian Hospital. But if you were to walk through the hospital and ask anybody about me, they'll say, oh, you mean the preacher? <laughs> Joyce and her husband were in our hospital. And they'll let you know. Folks do know who I are. And they know <laughs> that I am a Christian. It doesn't take you long to meet me before I introduce you to Jesus Christ. It doesn't take a person long to come into our home before my wife will tell them who I am or I would introduce them to my wife. See, we share it with our words with one another. How well do you build up Jesus Christ? Do you, you know, my wife probably makes it so people want to meet me. She'd tell them all kinds of good stuff about me. And they'd say, well, I'd like to meet that fellow. When I talk about my wife, I build my wife up to people and they think to themselves, I'd like to meet your wife. When I talk of Jesus Christ, I build him up, though you can't really build him up, because what could you say that is not true of him? By our prayers, the faith we have in him, the things we are able to and willing to ask him to do. We are concerned with his mission. Often the prayers of this church have to do with accomplishing the will of Jesus Christ. We like to mimic his words when he said, Not my will, but yours be done. And so it is not my will that is important. There will come a day when I will say my last word, breathe my last breath, and another man will stand here. <coughs> And there will come a time when people won't even know that I was ever upon this earth. Very few will know that I have passed this way, except for those who I have left the message in their hearts. And Jesus Christ passed this way 2,000 years ago. <coughs> Men and women, boys and girls, have been so taken by him that you would think he was just here yesterday. Might that be true of us? What the church needs is Jesus Christ in her midst. And isn't that his promise? Where two or more are gathered in my name, I will be there in the middle of you. Some of you may have to move over a little bit to make room for Jesus Christ. <laughs> He is likely to come. And so he must be brought. I remember telling my brothers and my sisters, my mom, my dad about Jesus Christ. I brought him to them. And he abides in their hearts and lives even to this day. What must first be done? <clears throat> you must first hold him. If you don't have him first, you can't share him with anyone. How is this done? Remember the woman at the well who said, I have found a man who told me everything I ever did. I found a man. 
you must be willing to say to the world, I have found a Savior who is everything to me. When we find Him, you cannot find Jesus Christ without falling in love with Him for what He has done for you. And I say again that love will always be the key. It will always be what holds you close to Him. Him close to you. It's what makes you talk about Him. It is why you cannot be silent. Any of you in here grandparents? You ever have trouble talking about your grandchildren? <laughs> My grandbaby, I held her up here. I showed you how much she looks like Grandpa. <laughs> it's easy to talk because I am absolutely crazy about that little girl. Mom and Dad, when she starts to cry, see, I don't need to hear her cry as often as Mom and Dad do. I like it. <coughs> Mom and Dad, I go in there, she goes again. <laughs> Not me. That means she's in the house. I was going across the driveway this morning, going to get my coat, and I could hear that little old cry of hers. My girl is there. And so all the quicker I ran across the drive to the house to get in there to see her. Why? Because Grandpa's in love with that little girl. Amen. It's easy for me. I could show you, I mean, Lord knows how many pictures there are out there about her. Why? Because it's easy to talk about those little us. Your children, your grandchildren, your husband, your wife. It's easy when love is new, when love is strong. And so I suppose what we must say is we must keep our love toward Jesus Christ young and strong. Mine is over 40 years old that I have been walking with him now. 40 years or better. Right more like 41, 42. I've been in love with Jesus Christ longer than some of you have been alive. I wouldn't trade it for the world. You couldn't give me the world. You just could. I remember my wife asking when we were young, she used to ask me, why do you love me? And I said, I'm not going to say it. Because if I have a reason for loving you, I'll have an excuse for leaving you. <coughs> so let's just leave it at I love you. <coughs> That's the same with Jesus Christ. Why do I love him? Oh, I could tell you all the things he did for me. But since I met him, there is so much more about him that I have learned. I love him because I love him. And let's leave it at that. Till the last forever. There yet remaineth these three. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And so I say to you, fall in love with Jesus Christ. So that you might say, I have found him. I have held him. I have brought him. I have tried today to bring him to you. I trust you will try to bring him to others. It is easy, whether sinner or saint, Christ loves you. We know that He died. He gave Himself for us. Our mission is simply to tell people that He died in their place for their sins. And that if they would ask Him to save them, He would take them to heaven when they die. Death, burial, and resurrection is all He wants folks to know. That's why Paul said, I don't want to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. My job isn't to teach you everything from Genesis to Revelation. When I first started witnessing the people, I had to be very simple. I knew one verse, actually two. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself. It is the gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast. That's all I knew. But then I went to college. And the next thing you know, when I tried to lead people to Jesus, I'd start back here in Genesis and take them all the way to Revelation. Somebody said, man, you can give them the whole book. Well, I want to make sure they understand. And then I realized, no, death, burial, and resurrection, that's all pretty need to know. And so let's keep it simple. Let's all stand.
find some time today to express your love to Jesus. It'll do you good. It is good for me to remind myself by telling my wife every now and then that I still love her. It's good for her to hear. But it probably does me more good to say it. So although Jesus Christ already knows your heart, it'll do you some good to say to him at some point today, Lord Jesus, I love you. Whether you want to say it here at this altar or say it in the privacy of your own home, that's up to you. But the altar is open. Maybe you feel that you need to pray for them folks in Boston. I tell you, Sister Joyce Penn right there, her husband tomorrow morning goes in for bypass surgery. Five. Not just a triple bypass. they got to do five bypasses on heart and heart. She can use some prayer. Pray with her. We got good news, though. Her good friend Jenny there in Phoenix, the one that we were praying for about the uh, cancer, she's doing good. Where's the word? I wanted us to know that. And, of course, Jenny just got word that she's got asthma. Of all things. So, we got to pray. And so, maybe you want to pray. Maybe you love her. Maybe you want to pray with her. That's fine. Altar's open. You'd be surprised how many things God has done for folks in this church. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, don't leave the building until you know. Best question to ask yourself if you die today, do you know for sure you go to heaven? Or would you die? If you don't know before, please give me a moment of your time. I'll show you how you can know for sure. These things, the book says, are written that you might know you have eternal life, and that this life is in Jesus Christ. If you don't know that, please, I have given my life to telling people of Jesus Christ, give me that opportunity to do this on um, This song. Um,
much for your love and your grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you love us. I pray you'd help us to love you more and more every day. Might we find you in our hearts. Always. Might we hold you there forever. And might we share with you with those who come in contact with In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your wave offering, we'll wave that before the Lord. And on your way out, that's right. Just wave it back and forth to the Lord, to and fro, back and forth. We offer it to Him. And in Jesus' name, we send these dollar bills to the mission work. Amen. So drop those off on your way out. We're going to see my God bring us once through as we go. You're all invited back this evening.
how she wraps it around. Yeah, that's what she's saying, yeah. Bring it next time. Yeah, and then, you know, then she'd be like more, your arms is free. Right. She, I seen this lady, she had this kid, he had to be like that. Right. 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 And she had this blanket or something tied on her. And the way she had it, like, and then her arms was like this, and this big old kid with her. I would be carried right. You can walk now. I uh, know. Okay, it talked. <laughs> Yeah, you guys can